Do any of you guys have Boston Terriers? I'm just curious. And if you do, do they have this reaction to a washcloth? Wait. Winnie, Lulu. What's this? Oh, oh Jesus. Hold on. Winston, you look like a psycho. You get them you get them crazy eyes. What is it? Oh. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> You're gonna knock the tripod over. You got you guys are crazy. I mean, is that normal? Like, I feel like that's I mean they're a little bitty, but man, they get just wound up about some stuff. I mean, they're small, but they get rowdy. On a side note, uh, please, nobody worry. They, they never hurt themselves. It's a lot of growling and acting crazy, but it's really all it is. They, they don't really fight. They're brother and sister, they love each other. But man, do they get rowdy over toys and even hand towels, which I find is odd. Maybe it's just part of the breed. I don't know. That's why I said, if any of you guys have them, do you have the same thing going on? Just trying to finish off my coffee for the morning before we get the day going, which by the way, is this stuff right here. No connection to Marvel Studios, I don't believe. <laughs> no, it's actually a Brazilian coffee with, check this out, milk chocolate, hazelnut, deep, sweet, and creamy. I mean, come on, that sounds great. And it's a natural processed coffee, which is pretty interesting. You know, there's two ways they process coffee. They either wash it or it's naturally processed. I've actually found lately that I'm really digging some of the naturally processed coffee. So, I don't know, interesting. I don't know if you guys have a preference or if you've ever tried the difference between naturally processed and washed. But anyway, thank you to the good folks at Trade who provided me with that awesome coffee and also are sponsoring today's video. You guys have heard me talk about Trade before on here. I'm a big fan of what they do. If you're like me in my area, I have a couple local roasters, but I don't have an abundance of coffee roasters in my area or a lot of different places to get specialty coffee. What Trade does is allows you to get coffee from some of the nation's top roasters delivered right to your door without ever having to leave your house, which Honestly, in today's world, that's a benefit because, well, I don't think you need to talk about it, but that Rona. So how Trade works is you're gonna just go to their website, you're gonna take a quick quiz and tell Trade how you like your coffee so they can curate matches just for you. Then you're gonna choose your delivery frequency, how often you want your coffee, and it's gonna come directly to your doorstep fresh from the roaster. After you have enjoyed some of that coffee, you can go back onto Trade's website, you can rate the coffee, which will just further help Trade kind of dial in what your likes and dislikes are so they can make sure you're getting the perfect cup just for you. So this sounds like something you're interested in. Make sure you check the link I'm going to put down below and you can get 30% off your first bag from the good folks at Trade Coffee. Thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video and uh, my morning cup. I'm telling you, Black Panther. It's delicious. Not Black Panther. Just Panther, not Black Panther. That is Marvel. Jesus, it's good stuff though. Anyway, like I was saying, lots to do today. We've got some errands to run with the wife. We got to get to the point of the title of this video, End of an Era. We're going to go upstairs and we're going to talk about that. Also, look. Oh, devastating. I dropped my not neutral cup today and broke it when I was making my coffee this morning. I love that coffee cup. I'm going to have to order more. Too bad they're like $20 a pop. It's ridiculous. But anyway. Let's go upstairs and let's talk about the title of this video. Okay. You're probably thinking, Jeremy, what's with the bullshit clickbaity title, The End of an Era? Well, that's part of what we're doing today. It's what, part of what I got to get done today. I am officially selling all my Canon stuff, all my Canon lenses, everything, and completely switching over to Sony. Uh, I had switched over to uh, Sony for my little handheld runabout you know, uh, point and shoot type thing a while back. And I've been relatively happy with that for what it is and what the purpose of it is. But I've always been a Canon guy. I've got a bunch of money invested in Canon L lenses. I've got a couple nice Canon cameras and I have for years going all the way back to, I think I started with the 70D. Actually, no, before the 70D, I had a, uh, ah, shit, what was it called? A Rebel, one of the Rebel cameras back a uh, very long time ago, years and years ago. 
Been with Canon ever since then. Well, ah, Canon, I still love you, man. I really do, but with the R5 and R6 and our overheating stuff that was going on with it, I just, I canceled my pre-order for my Canons I had pre-ordered and I ordered a, can, a, a Canon. See, it's stuck in my head. I always want to say can, a Sony a7S III. I've had it for a few weeks. I've been filming stuff with it. I wanted to make sure, and I really like it. And it hurts for a Canon guy to say that, um, but you know, I've always said being on team this or team that's kind of silly. Whatever gear works best for you is what you should use, right? There's no sense in having any like allegiance to one brand or the other. I'm sure there will be some debate on people that like the Canons and people like the Sonys, but overwhelmingly, this has been a very well received camera and this has been fantastic in the several weeks that I've had it. 4K is great, the slow motion is great, the autofocus is ridiculous, it's all just been good. So, it's the end of an era. I'm switching to Sony, at least for the time being. So I'm trading it all in, which will help me, you know, finance some of my new gear. So it's not such a, not such a, a pain point. So that's part of what we're doing today. So I got this nice big box, and uh, I'm actually really sorry, uh, Pete. I know you're probably not watching this, but it's one of his nomadic boxes, um, and he's a Canon guy, and I'm gonna be trading all my Canon stuff in. I'm sending it in this box. So sorry, Pete, but man, I remember it when I got this lens, the 70 to 200. Oh, F2.8, this is a serious lens. This is a really great lens, but um, gotta go. Canon 16 to 35 F4. You know, this is a great lens. I didn't use it as much as I thought. I got the F4 because the F4 is a stabilized lens and the 2.8 isn't. Looking back, I wish I would've gotten the 2.8 because honestly, with a lens that wide, stabilization isn't that big of a deal. So, but anyway, going in the box. One of my favorites. I use this lens probably 50% of the time when I'm shooting B-roll. I love this lens, the Canon 100 millimeter. <laughs> It's just such a good macro lens. You can get those really tight shots, detailed shots for product photography. It's also really great. You can get back and use it as a nice portrait lens or whatever, very versatile lens. And also like one of the least expensive uh, L lenses on the market. So really, really good, good uh, value for your money. Another one of my faves, the Canon 24 millimeter 1.4. Man. All my talking head stuff for the last several years has been shot with it. It's just a great all-purpose lens, but for now, it's going in the box. Ah, the camera that when I got it, I was like, man, now I can really get some professional stuff. To this day, I, it's still a great camera. Up until, well, up until I got the, the Sony. Uh, a few weeks back, I was still using this camera for my B-roll when I needed 120 frames a second. It's such a great photography camera. The Old Faithful 1DX Mark II. Major downside is huge camera and it doesn't have a flippy. So it's very hard to film yourself. So that's why I basically only used it for photography and for you know B-roll and stuff for the 120. But man, the 120 is, money but huge camera expensive and i probably won't use it anymore so sorry it's going in the box <laughs> last but certainly not least eos r a lot this camera caught some serious shit when it came out a lot of people because the specs are a little underwhelming but man it's been a hell of a workhorse for me i've used it for a ton of stuff i used it for all my talking head stuff for at least a year and a half or two years it's got 60 frames a second so you got uh, a little bit of slow motion but just an overall great image quality for what it was it's been a workhorse for me i can't say anything bad about it and at this point they're really affordable you can probably pick one of these up for pretty cheap at this point and a lot of the rf stuff they're coming out with all the rf new rf lenses Fantastic, but for now, going in the box. And sorry if you guys aren't into camera gear, this is a bit of a long camera segment, but I like to go to this stuff sometimes because I think a fair share of you guys are somewhat into this stuff. So I get a lot of questions about stuff. So this kind of answers some of it. What I've gotten to replace it, this is a very all-purpose lens. This is the Sigma 
24 to 70, 2.8 art lens. I mean, it's just, just such a great multi-purpose lens. 24 to 70 is such a good range. I've had it for a couple weeks now, and man, it's almost like the all-in-one lens. Like if you really only had to have one lens or could only afford one lens, I would probably say this is the dude, just because it covers such a, a good range. And Sigma did a really good job with this one, and it's super affordable compared to like the G Master equivalent. And I don't know if you guys ever watched Gerald Undone. If, if you're into camera gear reviews, definitely check out his channel. That guy gets into deep technical stuff that actually makes my head hurt. But I love it because he gives you all the information. Very, very thorough reviews. He actually paired this up against the G Master, and uh, it pretty much went tick for tack and it's like half the price. So, you know, there's that. The other lens I've picked up, the 90 millimeter 2.8 G lens. I don't know if this is a G master, just the G. Kick a little something for the G's. And this is to replace my 100 millimeter macro because anybody who does product photography, I feel like you need a macro lens. And then the lens I'm shooting with on the camera right now, which is the 16 to 35 2.8 G master. And that's for all my white stuff. So really, with these three lenses, I've got everything covered from like 16 millimeters up through 100 and a macro capability. So I feel like that's a pretty good start for my Sony ecosystem. I, I might still pick up the 70 to 200 to replace my Canon 70 to 200, but honestly, I didn't use my 70 to 200 a ton. So I don't know, we'll see if I need it. Uh, by the way, excuse all the mess. It's really messy up here. Uh, it's actually really good that you can't see everything around you. And it's good that you're only kind of seeing a small swath because it is a disaster. The other thing we're doing today is me and the wife are gonna take a trip to Ikea. I am in the middle of redoing my closets up here. I've got three closets up in the upstairs of my house, which the upstairs of my house is pretty much all my studio. They're a disaster. I mean, I'm embarrassed to show you. They're, there's so much crap crammed in there. I need to find a better organization solution. So Ikea has these, I think it's called the pack system if I'm not mistaken, but anyway, it's this very modular shelving slash closet system that, I mean, you can customize it however you want. You could put just plain shelves, you can put slide out shelves, you can put drawers, make these really nice slide out shelves that are good for all your chargers and your wires and there's all these dividers you can get and stuff. Really great. So I think I'm upgrading all of my closets to those so that I can get this crap in better organized position. It's my OCDs going out of control with all the, it, there's shit everywhere, it's horrible. So that's the other thing we're doing today. So trading in on my Canon stuff, I'm sorry Canon, the end of an era. A lot of gratitude to Canon for allowing me to get this far in my career. I've only used Canon since the beginning of my YouTube career and got a lot of love for you guys. So hopefully you guys rally and come back around. But Sony, you're crushing it with this this new a7s3 i love this thing for now wait for the wife to be ready those and then we'll go to ikea those. sounds like a plan yeah started from the mud now you see us going down numbers never uh, uh, try to record this with one hand that's the only thing this is the sony zv1 by the way talked about it in the last vlog i used this for like run and gun when i'm leaving the house so i don't have to take a bunch of big gear and it does reasonably well you don't get the same quality, but it, it does okay. The only thing I don't like is the widest it'll go is what it is, which is about a 24 millimeter equivalent, which my arm just isn't really long enough. I wish it was like a 16. And by the way, sorry for the wind noise, but again, truck, cigar, wife equals uh, windows down. Allison's really excited about Ikea. I'm excited about the meatballs. She's just excited about the meatball. I say we shouldn't eat the meatballs. Meatballs and mashed potatoes. I say we shouldn't eat the meatballs because they, they could have Corona on them. They definitely don't. They definitely could have Corona. You could be eating Corona balls. Look, I'm trying to get where I'm going, but haters be trolling. That's why they f thinking you got me right where you want me. I tell a ghost just duck duck. Sending them shots. We send them back. Young ain't really about that. Run. It's always bounce back. Need more hands just to count down. Stay on my So one of the keys to making it through Ikea successfully Knowing these damn shortcuts is crucial. Gotta swipe. He bridging the gap. They want us to rap. So fuck we back. Do need a plaque? We turn to the Look at all the organizational bliss. So this PAX system is what this stuff is in IKEA. And if you need storage, I strongly recommend PAX closet systems are great because they're totally modular and you can build them out however you want. 
which is super, super helpful. Rods for clothes, pull out shelves, drawers, the whole thing. It's all very customizable. Look at This is the greatest thing ever. We are uh, at the cafeteria. We had to get Allison some food though because she was getting hangry. She was getting very grouchy. Is it hard to hear me with not being able to see my mouth? Is this weird? Uh, the Ikea meatball. Allison, do you feel, are you happy that you're finally getting some meatballage? <laughs> yeah. Don't want to happen overnight. Work smarter with some sacrifice. Sugar spice. Battery's dying. So. <laughs> my second favorite part of Ikea. The candy. Waiting to pick up our stuff. And uh, battery's getting on. Just like I thought, the battery died. Technical difficulties, I apologize, folks. We are done loading up the truck, though. Got all the crap we needed from Ikea. Allison got her meatballs. Hold your reins. Oh, Jesus. Allison's driving the truck. This is scary. It's so scary. Oh, my God. We're going to die. Oh, Jesus. That, that was a red light. Gang and we making a killing. It's 2020 and they notice a vision. You be the hero, I'm playing the villain. The underdogs and we walk in the building. We getting money, yeah, they think that we dealing. They talking hot, yeah, if they abundance and we won't stop till we all touch a million. Don't ever forget, but we probably forgive them. I'm living, taking the cause that was given. My uh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't like a full plastic suit. Yeah, I was about to say, I, ho <laughs> I hope them fellas have breathing apparatuses because. <laughs> And that was a dust storm. Dust storm in Florida. The most humid, wet place in the United States. Got Camera died. Amateur move. I thought I had it charged up for today, but apparently the cord that I charged it with last night, so we were running on empty batteries today. I'm lucky we got through as much as we did. Time for a little coffee. That mustache life. Nice afternoon. It's cooled off a nice little bit. It's actually like a tolerable temperature outside in Florida, finally. Not a bad way to end the day. Even if I did have to spend some of it in Ikea. Obviously in this vlog, there's no time. It'll take me like, a, the closet's a situation. Maybe that's a different vlog, or maybe I'll do that off camera and I'll show you the finished product of another vlog. Did want to show you guys one last thing, hold on. Oh, I finally got in the final production model of, I think what we're calling the Sip and Smoke. You guys have seen this in many videos. It's a, a custom ashtray coaster combo I've been working on for months now with the good folks and exclusive. This comes out obviously so you can dump your stuff, but man, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. the final production version is hot. I think we're probably gonna drop these probably sometime this week, probably within I don't know when this vlog is going to go live, so it's hard to say, but we'll see. If this vlog goes out after they're released, I'll put a link below. If not, then just keep an eye on the website and my Instagram. I'm going to finish up this cigar and enjoy this nice afternoon out on the back porch. Hope everybody has a good one, and we will see you in the next video. Truck law camera red, red light. That was Ikea. red. It had just turned I, green. I, 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 license number. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. She did go through that bitch like she was running it. Oh, good God. We're trying to work our way through the maze. Maze it is. Oh. It's the end. The light at the end of the tunnel.